Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse with a review of the Bandai Real Grade 1144 High New Gundam, joining the Real Grade Pantheon alongside the regular New Gundam. This is a Real Grade release and everyone wants to see it, and there really is a lot to talk about. But before we go on ahead, there is a companion review of this kit for the HUC High New, which we'll also be seeing throughout this review, but do drop by and find out all about that slightly old but still lovely kit. Okay, here we go. The real grade High New Gundam was released on September 11, 2021, and it sold for a price of 4,950 yen. The box CG is credited to Edo Koji, and the art was finished up by Akatuki Art. The box measures 39 by 31 by 9 centimeters, which is the bigger format of the RG boxes. The short side of the box lists this as the 36th release in the RG line, and everything else is repeated from the front of the box. Both sides are exactly the same. The long side boasts about everything from the moving panels to the color accuracy that we all expect from an RG kit. The other side has a few more studio shots and all the legal text. Inside the box, we get the high news spread across 14 runners with the first 8 of them here, and then the remaining 6 right here, and we don't get an action base in here. The only pre-molded frame parts are these right here for the funnels, which are reused from the new Gundam, and it continues the trend of having these parts mostly as a symbolic gesture. And that's my buddy Hobby in the background right there who wanted to keep me company, so you'll be seeing him in a few shots. We get a sheet of stickers here with the expected beautiful metallic prints and lots and lots of marking stickers, which are loved by casual fans and serious builders alike. Well, the metallic ones more so than the clear stickers. The instructions here come as a stapled booklet with the back here for the sticker guide for that gigantic sticker sheet we saw just now, and then there's a color guide at the bottom. The inside of the book is all for assembly instructions, with each major section punctuated with some info on the part you're about to build. So, in the middle of my build, this happened. The forehead crest of the antenna jumped right out of my hand and it disappeared when it hit the floor. I couldn't find it no matter what I did, so I had to give up on it and I just started making my own out of epoxy putty, because I wanted to move forward and get the review done. I got quite far along when I found it finally, after over a day later. And the crest I was making hadn't fully cured yet, so I made this other T-shaped anchor to hold down the antenna so I could get on shooting the actual review. The piece I made looked like this, and it's pretty close to the original, even though it's just in a really rough shape. It also fits on that head nicely as well, but in the end, I didn't have to use either one, and that's pretty lucky. Anyway, that's just a really short story with a really happy ending. Alright, back to the proper review. After about 3 hours, we have the High News' entirely new inner frame, and yes, nothing here is reused from the new Gundam. This is all polystyrene, so there's none of that ABS pre-molded frame slipping nonsense when it ages, though the joints here are overall quite stubborn, and you'd know that if you've bought any recent RG releases. The waist design here is almost identical to the one on the new Gundam, with the double-jointed arm here that can raise up the entire torso. The shoulders are also the RG style of the insane 4-axis combo joints that can swing out entirely from the torso and it can fully unfurl, and somehow it can all fold back really neatly when you push it all in. More unique to this kit is the panel under the neck here that can help raise the head a bit more, but that's really nothing compared to the 3-stage band on the leg which you may have seen Bandai boast about for this kit, and it really is amazing to see how the entire frame transforms as it bends. Tucked inside here is a set of hydraulics, which the new Gundam had too, but this time we get the top section here in this slightly orangey gold color, and then the lower part molded in silver, which is a little bit hard to see. Further down, we get the silver bits of frame here that can swing outwards, which is for decoration more than articulation, but the ankle joint here drops down to radically expand the swing of the feet, like this and this. Here is the arm-mounted machine gun which has an extending mechanism all taken care of in the frame, though it's really hard to do without the outer armor. Here's a closer look at the funnel containers, which has molded details suggesting a metal cage that goes over all the machinery on the inside. The vent at the end here has a nice silver hood on it, but even better than that, it's linked to the fin funnel dock at the end here, so when one of them moves, then the other swings together. Again, all of this is done in the frame. There's so much detail here that if we're going to look at all of it, we're going to be here all day long. But to put it simply, when you buy a real grade kit, this is the kind of inner frame that you have in mind that you really hope to get. 
This frame changes as it moves and it reveals more layers and even more details that tell you more about the high new Gundam. So it's not only just amazingly engineered, because you know, all RG kits are, like the wing Gundam, but on that kit, the frame is just not as descriptive and it really wouldn't be something you'd display on a shelf. But the Haidu here is certainly good enough for display on its own. I mean, it's almost perverted that this looks better than some full kits are, and most of it will never be seen by anyone other than the person who built it. But that's exactly what an RG kit promises. It promises us excessive detail and excessive engineering for people who don't mind paying. But with that said, let's do exactly that and cover all of this up with the outer armor. And then another two hours later, we have the completed high new Gundam. It's gonna take a while to work on this kit because nearly all the pieces except for the frame parts are undergated, so they're all a nightmare to clean nicely, and there's so many pieces. Now this is not a complaint, but you will need to set aside maybe two or more sittings to get through everything there is in this kit. The Hainu has its signature white and blue color scheme, which is only two colors, but it's split in a way that's gonna make most model kits weep. But really, we've been spoiled because all the previous kits have already long defeated this challenge, so it's kind of easy to forget that we're actually looking at very sophisticated parts and color separation here. The RG design mixes things up with the gold highlights that break up the cool and subdued tones, and it sets the kit apart from every other design so far for daring to add one more color to the iconic color scheme. For the RG signature dual tone coloring, the designers went nuts and they skipped every other part on the kit and they only applied it to some parts, like the blue on the shield right here which we get an additional pastel blue, but it's on the funnels that they really flex their skills. So the funnels imitate that blue gradation that we best know from the MG Furuka High New, but the thing is, even for the Mighty Furuka kit, they thought it was more sensible to have the funnels be in all white and then leave the coloring to the water slide decals. On our kit, the designer said, well screw that, it's plastic or nothing, and they use a lighter blue tone to give us the representation of that gradient on both sides for every funnel. So it's kind of a nightmare to put together six of these, but the kit has crazy colors, and it's not afraid to make you put in the effort to make it happen. Another price to pay for the looks is that this kit doesn't stand up. Like, at all. It's so back heavy that by itself, once you let go of the kit, the funnel containers and everything on the back is gonna topple the high new instantly. Even if you do a forward lunge, the weight is still just too much for the poor kit and it just can't handle it. What you'll see most people do is they're gonna use the fuel tanks on the back for support, which is what I did in some shots like this right here, even though the feet don't sit flush with the ground anymore when you do it. But the thing is, it worked for a while until it didn't anymore, like this right here where the fuel tank started to slip like crazy. We'll talk about the slipping a little bit later, but in the end, it's best to have some kind of back support for the kit like this action base here. It doesn't have to be like this big one right here, but it just happens to be what I was already using for the review here. And while we're on the subject, this is the action base adapter that we get for this kit, because RGs tend not to have just 3mm holes on the crotches for action bases. You need to plug this into the bare back of the Hainu, and then the backpack goes on top of that to lock it in place. And that gives us a reinforced connection for the action base's 3mm connector. This is a heavy kit, so all of this is absolutely necessary. Previously when I reviewed the RG Wing Gundam, I was really surprised to hear so many of you guys say you were disappointed by the lack of a cockpit door, and man I did make that mistake twice. The cockpit has a blue panel here which you're gonna need a narrow tool of some kind to get it open because your fingers definitely won't fit into this space, but if you weren't happy with that, this entire section can swing open and upwards for even better access to the insides. Now we still don't get an Omro figure this time though, so you're gonna have to get the RG New Gundam for that. And let's address the elephant in the room that's much talked about, which is the size of this kit. Specifically, if we bring in the high-grade high new Gundam, we can see what the problem is. That the RG kit is just huge, and many people have been talking about how Bandai doesn't seem to respect the scale they print on the box anymore, and well, that's not untrue because by head height, it really is way too tall. But as it turns out, the extra height may not be as strange as you might think, at least for the RG line anyway. So if we strip down both kits to the torso, we get nearly the same size. I mean, the RG is still slightly bigger, but it's not proportional to the difference between the full height of the two kits. So we're starting off with at least something that's close to 1144. The main difference comes from the legs, and immediately we can see just how much height they added to the high new through the legs. 
And if you've watched my RG Wing Gundam review, you might be getting a bit of deja vu here because the designers did exactly the same thing on that kit as well, adding a lot of height through the legs because they wanted more leg. And in case you never noticed, this is actually a characteristic of the entire real grade line, and it's something I felt was taken a little bit too far on the new Gundam. A lot of people love how well made that kit is, and it is a very well made kit, but too few people actually notice or mention how it actually has Barbie legs that are way too long for the torso. And that's part of what's happening here, with the extension of the legs to change the ratio of them to the torso. But you see, they have to make the kit taller this way because the other option is to make the torso smaller to preserve the height that would fit the 1144 line. But that presents another problem too, which is the cockpit and everything will be for Oompa Loompas if they make it smaller. So while I'm not defending Bandai for ignoring the 1144 scale, my opinion here is that they at least made this choice with some kind of reason behind it, and it's not that they get a kick out of messing with us. And you know what? I suspect the designers were at least somewhat aware of the new Gundams' legs looking a little strange because this time, the legs aren't just longer, they're actually really thick if we rotate them to the front right here. So the entire limb is bulked up to balance out that extra height with a lot of width. Now it just so happens that the high new works with this look because the older artwork always showed it as a very bottom heavy mobile suit. It was born in an era when this style of oversized limbs and bottom heavy mechas were very popular. The longer legs didn't pan out quite well for the new Gundam because they couldn't just turn its legs into tree trunks, so the longer legs isn't automatically a good thing for all kits, but ultimately it is a good thing for the high new. Katoki Hajime talks about this older look himself in an interview about the MG Verka High New, where he says he always felt it was a bit of a shame that the older MG kit lost the chubbiness of the older drawings and that was something he wanted to bring back in the newer take of the MS. And guess what? That's exactly what he did through the legs. And now that you notice this, you can't ever unsee the fact that the Verka is actually quite a chubby boy, and you're welcome. So yeah, this kit isn't even close to 1144 anymore, and that's always going to be a thorn on the side. But to recap, the RG designers like to extend the legs on their kits, and at least on the high new, it works out quite nicely. The arms in comparison aren't that much longer, but they do have a lot more girth, and the shoulders are pretty massive to contrast against the smaller torso. And take a second to admire just how well the HEUC kits' colors hold up against the amazing real grade, with all the key colors covered on it, even with a little bit of gunmetal poking through the arms. What are much bigger are the wings, which you've probably already noticed are really exaggerated on the RG kit. The funnel container itself is not just larger, but it's basically an entirely different thing altogether, so it's a little bit hard to compare them. Uh, so here's an example. On the new container, the beam saber rack opens up on the other side compared to the HUC, so they're really not meant to be the same design even though they are the same part of the MS. And for the funnels, it's not just a case of skewing in one dimension, but the entire thing is hit with an enlarging ray. It, it comes to about maybe 50% bigger in my totally unscientific eyeballing. I don't think anyone is complaining on this front, especially when the RG designers put all that extra volume to work by filling it with so much mechanical detail and extra color. They're big, but they don't hurt the looks at all. Speaking of big, check out the gargantuan fuel tanks that are way more than 50% bigger. And I suspect once you catch sight of this newer and bigger one, the older HUC one won't ever be able to satisfy you anymore, if you know what I mean. But really, the poor HUC fuel tanks has nothing on the RG one. Not in size, nor in color, or in detail, or even in the white plastic they use. It's always in these smaller details that RG kits really shine with their girthy budgets. But while we're on the subject, the gigantic tanks have a ball joint up here on top, so if you pull it out a little bit, it's going to give you room to angle the tank beyond just the swivel of that joint at the very very top. The thing is, the tanks are so big, the ball joint really struggles to hold it in place, and there will be many times when the tank will just slip. I mean, it sort of works, but it's just not very reliable. What's a bit worse is the clip up top right here. That's the culprit for all the slipping tanks that we saw earlier in the review. You see, the one on mine right here has a stress mark on it, and it isn't just from me removing it, though kinda. It was already there from the beginning when it was still on the rod, so the grip starts out really strong, but this is gonna quickly give way when the plastic starts warping and by the middle of me shooting this review, the tanks you see here lost almost all of its grip, and the other side wasn't very much better. 
Now, you're going to do much better than me because you don't have to yank them off the bar as much as I have to, but this will still probably be a thing to some degree in the future of all of these kits. To round up the comparison, the new head deviates from the Izubuchi design on the HGUC, which goes wide as it goes all the way down. The new head tapers inwards a little bit, which is a much more mainstream look, and it's less alien to fans who haven't seen too many older drawings of the high new. The brow line also sits really low to give it an angry scowl, though it does cover up most of the eyes quite often. The face repeats the same controversial change as the new Gundam for the RG line, where the chin is reduced way down and the jaw line is tucked way up. Again, this gives us a more mainstream look, and it's not as different from other common Gundam faces, but it's also a bit of a shame that the high new here loses a bit of its character in the name of looking cool. A closer look at the new head gives us great details on the vents on the side and the Vulcans on the top, along with the shell injection ports on the side of the head. This little flap here on the back actually has a hinge and it can swivel a little bit, which is really cool looking, but it doesn't actually do anything in practice. Of course, everyone has seen and talked about these gigantic blade antenna, and they really are too big in my opinion. Like someone took a 1-100 part and they just kind of nailed it onto here. I mean, sometimes restraint is good. The eye is a clear piece, as they are with all RG kits, and the camera up top is clear too, running all the way from the front of the head to the back as you can see right here, which is to say the back camera is also that same clear piece. To swing back a bit and wrap up the HUC comparison, it really is hard to deny that the RG kit is just a much better looking and well made high new Gundam. The HUC is born from a very different design by Yutaka Izubuchi, but if that isn't something super important to you, then it's really not a tough choice here really. As always, I don't mean to say that the HUC is automatically trash or pointless, but for most people looking to have a high new Gundam specifically, then this kit is a very sensible choice that will be more satisfying to build and to display. Returning to the RG kit, let's have a closer look at the container here with the new blocky ports that the funnels dock into. If for some reason you really don't like the funnels, they look enough like thrusters that you could probably pretend that's what they are. They swing from side to side as you can see here and with the armor on, the outermost one becomes even more impressive when the vent moves and the white armor separates from the main body. When it closes, the armor rejoins that part and you'd never guess that this part can actually move. This little antenna at the top was seen on the Veruka kit as well, and just the same as that one, it's reinforced by filling up this space a little bit between the plastic, which they disguise as something that looks like a wing, but this is something you might want to be a bit adventurous and hollow back out. The entire wing swings along the peg that it attaches with, and then there's a hinge higher up that gives it a horizontal swivel, and the wing's angle can be adjusted as well. The new stabilizer here is a whole new design with an ingenious twist so it moves on a single axis and that part isn't very special, but the stabilizer itself has a straight and triangular look that we sometimes see like on the HGUC kit, but it's just made much bigger here. But the stabilizer actually transforms as well, where we can flip up this piece right here, and then extend this entire part, and then we can turn the tip downwards to get that hook look that we also see sometimes, thanks to the numerous and chaotic designs that we've had from the high new in the past, so we actually get both forms all rolled into one single part. In contrast, the Metal Robot Damashi figure tackled the same problem by outright giving you two parts to swap, but the RG designers ain't having any of that swapping nonsense. And the part they've given us right here is just surprisingly sturdy even when it's fully extended, so it's not gonna rattle much around at all. Of course, you're free to configure this part any way you like, you know, open or not, extended or not, hook tip or not, so this is actually a very expressive part. Now let's return to that amazing three-stage bend of the leg, and of course this looks great, right? I mean, we knew that already. But with the armor on, the leg can open up even further and transform with the hood right here, which lifts up a little bit and it opens up a crack on top, which lets us pull this whole armor panel out like a drawer, letting the first hood piece swing further up. The silver frames on the side right here swing outwards, which we've already seen. Then the panel on the back here swings outward as well, to complete this sideways open up silhouette. The panel on the calf here can also be pulled out, though it's a little bit hard to get any leverage on it and get them out, and quite often they will just suddenly give way and come loose. But with some adjustment and some patience, we can have it like this, which exposes even more of the frame inside on the calf. 
And with that, we have the leg fully opened up, which is really hard to hold and handle actually, but it looks great. Without the panels open, the legs still look amazing, but with it opened up, we get a better idea of how this could possibly rival the Nightingale in a fight. And we're not done yet with the opening panels because the shoulders here can be pulled outwards like this, no doubt a nod to the Furukandu Gundam's opening gimmick. This panel up top right here can be pulled up like this, though it's a little bit unclear if it's meant to be pointing up like this, or it's supposed to sit higher up like this but parallel to the shoulders. The choice is here for whatever you like. One last bit of opening armor is on the back skirts right here, where the blue parts can open as well. Not a lot, but just a bit to tease you with the extra bit of frame you can see for an extra bit of expression when you're posing the kit. So combined with everything else on the MS, we get a mobile suit that radiates in all directions, and the armor explodes open to reveal so much more detail than your eyes can ever take in all at once. I mean, I'm sure if you love RG kits, this is a big reason why. This is the best of Bandai's engineering, and this is what sets the RG Hainu above even kits as strong as the Master Grade Vuraka one. Moving on to weapons, we first have the beam rifle, and as we'd expect from an RG budget, the accessory comes to us in full color with the white outer layer, the gray body, and then the silver tip. That tip strangely sort of fits the beam effect part, but not all the way, and the base of it is really skinny, so you probably don't actually want to do this or else you'll risk snapping the neck of the barrel right here. There is a suggestion of an ammo pack on the bottom here, but it doesn't come off, so this part here unfortunately is just for show. Here it is next to the HGU Caesar's beam rifle, and the new gun really draws attention to the missing colors on the HGS gun, and the more radical proportions like the bigger tank up top and the longer gun barrel makes the new gun just handily more handsome above the two. The other side here has a small peg that swings out, and this is used to stow the gun on the back, where you drop down this piece on the back like this, and then you swing the top part up, and the rifle can be attached onto the back. Next, we have the beam sabers, which are stored inside the funnel containers. To get them out, you have to lift the door up a little bit to open up a crack, and then you claw out the part a little bit to pull it out, and then you lift it up. The design itself is very sophisticated, but in practice it can be a little bit clumsy as you claw it out. The beam saber handles themselves are stuck on really tightly to the top, so be really careful because the force you need to get it out can very easily snap the slit. The handle itself is a little bit on the small side, which is how it always has been, and it takes a standard 1144 beam effect part which comes in this very rare blue color. The holding hand has a peg which the handle can attach onto, so it's anchored down into the hand and it's never gonna fall and never gonna rattle. Fortunately, the peg here doesn't grip onto the handle as tightly as the rack that stows it. The HEU sees its beam saber with the Izabuchi MG design has two blades which makes it an overall longer sword, even if the longer blade itself isn't as long as the one we have here. Additionally, we have a third beam saber here just like the new Gundam on the left arm. To use it, you'll need to flip open this lid right here which can be a little bit stubborn. Then the front covers flips open as well and inside is our third beam saber handle. It's just as small as the others and it takes the same beam effect part, and really, they're exactly the same, except for their sculpt which is ever so slightly altered from the ones on top. They do fit into each other's spots, so chances are if you play around with them, you're gonna get them mixed up at some point because it's really hard to tell which is which. But yeah, the HG kit didn't have this, and of course the RG kit makes sure to include this, and it is very welcomed. The shield, however, does carry forward the MG design from Mr. Izabuchi, with the jagged cut between the white and the blue colors, but this time with the addition of a bit of light blue as a highlight. For the color, we've already been spoiled by the HG kit's amazing color separation, so it looks a little less shocking to us here, but it's actually still amazing. The shield is much larger and it's much wider, with a lot more geometry hiding among the shifting colors. The HG shield was already really great, so it still holds up really well on the back here with all that gunmetal closing up the back. The RG shield mixes in the beam gun and the missiles from the new Gundam into the front of the shield, which is something we've previously seen from the Vuraka kit. The shield mounts onto the side of the arm with a simple rectangular peg that holds it in place really well without any problems. Then we have the new Hyper Bazooka, which is still a silly name. It's done up in all the proper colors, like the silver for the plates along the barrel, 
And here's a quick side by side against the HG one. And I'm not gonna pick on the poor HG bazooka too much with that single gunmetal color, which isn't even a color you're supposed to see on the bazooka at all. We can see here that they're more or less similar in size, unlike the other weapons, and the HG certainly put in a lot of mechanical details, even though it doesn't have a lot of colors. The bazooka we have this time does have a telescoping barrel, just like the one with the RG new Gundam, and now it's like that boy that your girlfriend tells you not to worry about. To be honest, I don't think the default form was too short or anything, but it's really fine because if you don't care about the extra length just like me, har har har, you don't have to use it and people who want it can enjoy that more aggressive look. Is what I would say if the High New Gundam wasn't so unfriendly to bazookas. I mean really, all High New kits have this problem, where the funnel container just blocks the gun. And here you end up with a grip like this which looks okay, but it locks the wing up against the stabilizer and it doesn't look good at that part when it's posing. You can try to get around this, but it's just a physical reality that the High New just doesn't go well with bazookas. Oh, and there's another odd thing. So yeah, the trigger finger hand does fit into it, but it's actually designed to be held with the normal holding hand like this. But perhaps the best thing about the bazooka is how you can finally stow it on the back by flipping down this little panel on the back here, which exposes a little clip. The butt of the bazooka has a corresponding notch that attaches on. It mostly stays in one angle thanks to the shape of the arm that holds it in place and it won't really stay up in any other angle, but it's fine. The bazooka really is best when stowed like this to give the high new its full loadout. Then we have the arm mounted machine gun which we already saw as the inner frame. The hand dips down and the gun extends out. The outer armor doesn't really have much to do with the mechanism, so it works exactly the same as we saw it earlier. It's good, it's excessive, and it's just how we like it. And finally we have the fin funnels which we've seen for a bit already. They come off their docks up here and the friction is just right that they don't fall out but you can pull them off without much fuss. This white side of the funnel is reused from the new Gundam so it's exactly the same as what would be black on that kit. And you can see some of the leftover pegs and the holes that were used to connect the funnels together in that kit. They work with the figure eyes effect jet effect parts though I don't have any of those so unfortunately I can't show you this here. And all six of them do work and you're gonna have to be patient when you're building the weapon six times. And that really can get a little bit repetitive so maybe you're gonna have to ask a friend or a spouse to help you out. We've already seen this with the HEUC one so I'm not gonna go over all of it again. It's basically what you would expect from a fin funnels and there aren't any hidden catches and gotchas here with it. For the hands we get a pair of closed decorative hands. And a pair of holding hands. A single right trigger finger hand and then two open palms. You may have heard me say this before, but the closed fists aren't quite as essential on 1144 kits even when it's a bit enlarged like this, because we don't actually notice the holes on the regular holding hands nearly as much as on a bigger kit, but it's good of course when a kit does include these. The holding hands have a slit inside of them which we've already seen in action, and the index finger is a little bit raised, no doubt, which is why it works so nicely with the bazooka. These hands have an additional joint that lets you adjust the ball joints as ball. The lone trigger finger hand ends up being really just used exclusively for the beam rifle, and it will work with other beam rifles too, like the one in the new Gundam, because the hands are exactly the same. Then we have the open palms, which are nice because the left hand doesn't have much to do on the kit, so you might be using these on the left hand quite often. The ball joint here has an additional hinge at the end, which lets you swing the palm up and down. Onto the articulation, starting from the top, the head goes up a whole lot with the help of the swinging panel on the bottom that we saw earlier. It doesn't go down quite as much. The head turns side to side but the helmet hits the collar and it can't really turn a whole lot. The shoulders swing out this much and if you pull the combo joint out all the way, the arms swing outwards way past 90 degrees, even hitting the blade antenna. They swing around a full circle if the wings aren't around to get in the way. The biceps allow a full rotation of the forearms. And the forearms can rotate as well past the elbow. The elbows fold up until it hits the shoulder armor. The hands can be angled on their ball joint. And they can rotate around a full circle. The waist pulls up on that double jointed arm. And that gives us a bend forward like this. 
and an incredible backwards bend like this. It rotates side to side and it can go all the way around if you move the skirt armor out of the way. The front skirts swing up this much, and the side skirts swing up not a whole lot. The back skirts swing up, but also not a lot. The entire skirt armor assembly can be swung out on an arm like this, opening up the space for the legs. The legs themselves can swing outwards this much, and they rotate along the thigh a little bit. But they're actually on the RG style drop down joint which you can unlock with this panel at the bottom, and they swing the entire leg joint down like this, giving quite a big difference in how high up the leg sits and it opens up a lot of room for articulation when it's lowered. But you won't often need this because even without dropping it, if you move the skirt armor out of the way, the feet kick up all the way like this. And they swing backwards a lot with the help of that moving back skirt. The leg bend we've seen already and it comes close to 180 degrees. The drop down ankles lets the feet swing upwards this much, and backwards this much. Then they turn along the peg a little awkwardly, side to side like this. The toe has an additional hinge at the tip right here, and then the foot can arch upwards a little bit back right here as well. It's no surprise that an MS as popular and as high profile as a Hainu has impeccable articulation that can do this kneel that band I boasted about a whole lot. There's really not a lot more I need to say about this other than that it gives you all the tools to do any pose you can possibly want, limited only by your imagination. All while not being particularly clumsy or difficult while you do it, so it's excellent stuff. And surely you'd want to see it next to the HUC Nightingale, and you'll have to be the judge what you think about the bigger size, which brings it way closer to the Nightingale, which is just about the same in head height. I think it makes it a little bit more plausible that the Hainu is a match against it in the fight, but it's also true that we know it's not supposed to be this close in size. If we swap in the HGUC kit, we get all of that contrast between their sizes, which is a bit of a David and Goliath thing going on. And this also echoes more with the RX-78 and the Ziyang pair, where the showdown with Char always had him in a larger MS. Maybe the wrongness of the size will bother you enough that you might not want to get the Nightingale to go with this as a pair, so hopefully this look right here will help you decide on that. For our standard size comparison, here's the lower end benchmark, the entry grade RX-78. And here's the upper end benchmark, the high grade new Gundam. The extra height and those massive wings give the high new so much bulk that dwarfs the RX-78 on the side here. And it comes to about the same head height as the new Gundam, which I kinda mind because now we're gonna get lots and lots of people who think the high new is supposed to be the same size, which is like a very reasonable thing to believe, and it really isn't helped now with this RG kit. For a quick flashback, here's the HEUC high new, which stands nicely in between the two sizes. And as a footnote, I suspect one thing Bandai is considering for sure is to capitalize on how the high new Gundam is almost the same size as the new Gundam, and they're gonna adapt the HWS parts onto it. You see, the outer parts of the armor is like all these white runners here, and all of this can be reused because they only need to swap out this grey runner here, which fills up the back of the white parts, and they also adapt the armor onto the Gundam. Now this is not to say that they're going to do it with any certainty, and the high new itself certainly doesn't have any hidden holes or mounts to help put the armor on, but I know a lot of you are really curious if this might happen or not, and the answer is, the conditions are definitely there, if Bandai feels like doing it. And for the builders, yes you can absolutely adapt the HWS parts onto this thanks to the compatible size. With all that said, Here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai Rio Grade 1144 High New Gundam. Number 1. It's pure blood top class Rio Grade. All the great things people say about Rio Grade kits you will find on the High New. The details, the multi link joints with the sliding panels, and a complete inner frame, and that real unique Rio Grade twist where they add or change or mix up the design a little bit to really inspire builders. I mean, sure, it has some problems, like, well, it doesn't stand up, which is kind of basic, but at least that's fixable, and I imagine anyone would be happy to trade that for all the engineering we get in the wings and the stabilizer and the massive fuel tanks that slip like crazy. Okay, maybe they should have worked on that a little bit more. And number two, it's too big. 
I'm not going to easily forgive this, even though I've so painstakingly analyzed why it's so big. You see, the scales are there for a reason, and we want our kids to work together, and we care about our kids somewhat reflecting how big they are against each other. And this is like clown math level of deviation. And all of this isn't tough to fix. Just be like the HG Getter arc and just not put a scale on the box. I mean, believe it or not, we're actually probably fine with that. If it isn't 144 and Bandai, if you can't make it 144, then just don't sell it to us as 1144. But if you do, don't blame us for calling you out when what you're selling isn't what you say it is. And number three, it's the best high new you can buy. Before this kit, the Metal Robot Damashi high new Gundam was probably the best overall rendition of the character to date. The Master Grade Vurka is amazing. But it is a Vurka kit, and it has all the worst things about Vurka kits. But starting today, we have a contender for that top spot in this kit. There are very little caveats here and very little trade-offs. I mean, it doesn't even cost that much compared to the MG, and especially not much compared to the Metal Robot Damashi one. So if we're talking about the best of the best, then this kit has just about all of it in price and performance and amazing looks that anyone can have right out of the box. So that's a review of the RG High New Gundam. It's not every day that we get a high profile MS released in a high profile line like the real grade, and it's even more rare for Bandai to actually deliver in this kit. So get one when you can and marvel at those lovely legs like the Gundam pervert that you know you are. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on our coming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos like the HEUC High New Gundam review or the HEUC Nightingales review. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.